The proper tools and training are essential for success in any line of work, but even more so for the public safety professionals who serve our community. In this episode of Delivering Dubuque, we look at how the Dubuque Police Department is preparing our officers to fulfill their oath to serve with integrity, compassion, and competence. So over the last few years, there has been a lot of discussion in the United States and in Dubuque about policing and how policing works, what modern policing really means. So here to help me with that discussion today is our very own police chief, Jeremy Jensen. Chief Jensen, thanks for coming today. Well, thank you, Mayor Kavanaugh. Yeah. So some of the things we want to talk about today are a little bit about, you know, kind of how policing has worked in, in Dubuque, what the discussion has been over the last couple of years for us, how we equip our officers to do the work that they need to do because it's very important work in serving our community, and um, not just how we equip them with the equipment that they need, you know, and they carry with them, but how they're equipped with the skills they have too. So just, I guess, to start us off, you know, what has some of the discussion been over the last couple years about policing in Dubuque? Sure. You know, and you, you nailed it. There's a lot of things going on. You know, in 2020, we had a work session uh, around the Black Lives Matter movement. And what came out of that was a lot of directives, some council priorities for us as a police department, some things we were already doing, but some things that's like, you know, we need to tweak. You know, transparency, how we're doing things and letting the public know what we're doing. Less lethal options. Things about training our officers and getting our officers equipped emotionally equipped as human beings to best serve the community. Yeah, and I, I know I, I for one have really appreciated those discussions, you know, as a council member and now as mayor. How do we as a department move towards equipping officers to be ready to serve the community with the skills and the emotional intelligence that they need? It starts with the emotional intelligence. That's the umbrella. We all have an emotional response. We all have a physiological response to stress. So we're equipping our officers from the day we give them a job offer we literally give them an assessment on their emotional intelligence and start to work with them on uh, their self-awareness, their self-management, their self-direction. And then we bring in like mindfulness and peer support. It's really emotional intelligence. Well, you know, de-escalation and duty to intervene. Well, we're already doing it, but now we're really formalized. And it's not a scary thing for an officer to step in and say, you know, Mayor Cavanaugh, I need you to step back. Maybe I'll take care of this. We're partnering with the Fountain of Youth and doing a city of change. We're partnering with a community partner to look at, we all want change, how do we do that? On both sides. All right. We recently received a uh, Department of Justice grant for $250,000 to really supplement what we're doing with Critical Incident Team, which is around the brain health. Just kind of non-traditional roles that have come out since, since 2020 to say, you know, police departments need to step up in some areas. I want to point out, we've been doing emotional intelligence since 2008. We've been committed to that. We've been committed to community policing. And it's not necessarily community policing because so we're not policing, it's community engagement. It's a two-way street. The community has input in how we do business. Yeah, that's and that's great to hear. And you know, I've always appreciated how often I see officers out in the community at community events and not there to, to be a, a, a presence of force, but to be community members and be be people who are engaged with uh, everybody else just like just like we all are. So that's great. You know, one of the things I, I heard you mention when you were talking about some of the new options and the ways that you're looking forward is uh, less lethal options. As a city council, we, uh, in our budget last year, we passed some tools that you carry with you as officers. So can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Yeah, you approved the tasers. We, and the last thing we want to have happen is, is a lethal force right. situation. So that, that gives us a, gives us options. You know, the, the other thing you approved was body cameras, which gives us that transparency and accountability that goes along with this too, because that also gives us the ability to say, look, this is what happened. And so we're on our next generation of that already. Anytime we use equipment, there's extensive training that goes with that. Uh, tasers are one. Every officer went through a full day of training, learning about force, learning about deployment, the options, the aftercare, how we carry the taser, that it's not on the same side as your firearm. They look different, you know, they're yellow. There's intentional reason for that so that other people know that that is the taser. Officers themselves got tased, I got tased. Taser, taser, taser. Down, down, down. Over half of our officers did that as a voluntary thing to just not only empathize what it feels like, but also to say, you know, I've had it. And I, I applaud them for doing that. 
That's great. I mean, I'm, I'm really glad to know that our officers go through such extensive training to be able to use these tools like that. We have been so successful in so many ways in Dubuque in our police force. So I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, the federal government tracks what we do on clearance rates and our clearance rates, like part one crimes, which are the reportable crimes and crimes against persons is 85%. Nationally, it's 45%. Crimes against property, our clearance rate's almost 90% and the national clearance rate's 17%. I think it's very threefold. One is being that our community members, they are actively involved in helping us solve crime. Uh, the second part is we have great officers who are very dedicated and intelligent and they take pride in what they do. The third thing is our technology, our traffic camera system. I think we would still clear a lot of these crimes, but how fast we can do it. And if you talk about staffing, it's just how efficient and effective we are. The staffing hours that it would take over weeks, we're doing in hours, and I'm not exaggerating. We're literally doing this in hours and able to solve that. You know, traffic accidents even. You know, what actually happened? We're known that Dubuque's gonna solve the crimes. We thank you, the council, and, and everybody that's put effort into that. So what this conversation has really told me is just how much things have changed. How do you see the department evolving into the future as we look ahead? And I think the key word is there is, is change, not being afraid to change, not be afraid to try new things, engage the public, engage our community. What do they want from us? You know, and I think that's what we've learned over the last couple of years is that, you know, tell us what our role needs to be within your community. And it may not be the same from community to community. It may be a little bit different. You know, as we evolved, we can't just stop and say, hey, we're doing a good job, pat ourselves on the back and say, that's it. We gotta keep always looking what's the next thing. You know, always looking for a better way to make better decisions. You know, is there a way we can do that? And we're not just relying on ourselves to do that. We're relying on everybody to give us feedback and input into that. And it's equipping our officers to be sustainable. So the next generation, and to give them that, those mindsets and that where, when I leave, they're gonna take it 100% better than what I left it at. And that's, that's the goal. Yeah. You've covered a lot today. I mean, we've talked about you know, the transparency and the ongoing discussion in our community, how we train and equip our officers to do the work that they do and how technology is important and all that. I mean, this is a discussion that is gonna be ongoing and that, that discussion is going to evolve as, as we continue on in the years ahead. But I just wanna say thank you for being here today and being able to talk with us about this. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thanks, Chief Jensen.